First, if you start from the very last one-dimensional code that you wrote for the last design challenge, I suggest you first simplify it. So delete the PML and the materials that you have in that grid so it's just free space. So take out the snow, the body, and the ground. Now what changes or additions are needed to convert it to two dimensions? Well here's the list that I came up with. First, we need to initialize the HYs and the EZs so that they are two-dimensional matrices rather than one-dimensional arrays. And also we need to create a, a two-dimensional EX matrix. Then we need to add four loops uh, for or, or around the HY and the EZ updating equations. So I'll say updates so that we can cycle through the K's in the grid, K indices. Then we need to adapt the HY and the EZ updates to include the K index. So the field components call on I and K values. And then we need to adapt the HY updates to include the EXs, since we came up with a slightly modified update for, EY, uh, for HY that includes EX components. Then we need to introduce two-dimensional EX updates. And lastly, we need to adapt any plotting that we're going to do since the arrays are now matrices. So we'll probably want to plot matrices instead of arrays. And we need to adapt our source. Let's explore some of these changes in a bit more detail. First, to change the one-dimensional arrays to 2D matrices, we can just add a second dimension to them. In order to do that, we need to decide how many field components we want in each direction. Since we define the number of cells in the x direction to be i max, it is convenient to define the number of cells in the z direction to be k max. Then to create the 2D matrices to store the field components, we need to know exactly how many of each field component we need in both the x and the z directions. If we look at the diagram we drew earlier, we can number the field components in each direction in order to figure out how many we need. We might as well be consistent with the one-dimensional model we made earlier. So here, this is at i equal 1. This is also i equal 1. Here's i equal 2. And then i max is right here and a little bit in the way. So this is at i equal i max minus 1. So that's from earlier. And we can use the same strategy here. So this would be k is equal to 1. k is equal to 1 here as well. k is equal to 2. Here is k is equal to k max. And here is k is equal to k max minus 1. So now we can initialize the two-dimensional field component matrices. For example, for hy, we could write hy. We could initialize them to 0. So it'd be zeros before we had i max minus 1 and now we're just going to add k max minus 1 because the hy's end at the k max minus 1. Go ahead and initialize the ez and the ex matrices as well but be careful that you define the ez and the ex matrices to be the correct dimensions in the x and the z directions so you have the same number of EZ and EX field components as in this X, as in the X and Z directions of this diagram. Now, as for the one-dimensional model we created earlier, we're starting and ending this grid in both the X and the Z directions on an electric field component that is parallel to the edge of the grid. Here, here, on all four sides. 
For now, these outer electric fields are initialized as zero and they are never updated. So they will remain zero throughout the simulation, which, me which means that we're modeling perfect electric conductors along all four sides of the grid. Lastly, what should we set Imax and Kmax equal to? Well, we can consider what they should be equal to later as we apply the model to the design challenge. But now let's just set them both equal to a nice even 100 just to get started. This way we don't have an overly large grid, but we do have a good number of cells in each direction so we can check to see that our model is working once we're done writing it. Next, we need to account for the Z direction in the updating loops that we have for H, Y, and E, Z. For example, instead of just updating across all the I indices in the grid, we also need to update across all the Ks in the grid. I've copied here a segment of my one-dimensional code that I used to update the HYs and the EZs. Let's look at the HY updates. In order to cycle through all the Ks, we need another loop. So I'm going to write for K is equal to, and what are we starting and ending on for K when we're updating HY? Let's look at the diagram of our grid. It looks like we can update all of the HYs in the K direction. In the, actually, it looks like we can update all of them in the entire grid because all the HYs have EXs on either side and EZs on either side. So we can update all the way from K equal 1 to K equals K max minus 1. So here for my HY update, I'm going to write for K equal 1 to K max minus 1. And we're going to add another end here at the end of it. Go ahead and add a for loop for the k's on the easy update equation.